Nintendo Land is a bizarre game. It takes 12 different Nintendo franchises, some of which haven't been heard from in decades, and offers a game based on each one that showcases a unique use for the new gamepad controller. And Nintendo Land ties them all together by theming it to, well, a theme park, with each game being its own virtual attraction. It's basically the Wii Sports of the Wii U, but with a giant Nintendo twist. Now half of the 12 games are built for multiplayer, while the other half are single player only, and we'll be focusing on the multiplayer side of it first. Now because there's so many games, I'm not going to discuss them all in depth, so please make sure to watch our discussion videos if you want to learn more about each one. Now as I mentioned, there are 6 multiplayer games available, and they're split evenly between competitive and cooperative attractions. The competitive attractions are my overall highlight of the entire package, containing 3 of the top 4 games that I've played the most. All 3 are basically built around the fundamentals of the children's game, Tag, though with some occasional role reversal and crazy dynamics to switch things up. Of the 3, Luigi's Ghost Mansion is my favorite, though I thoroughly enjoyed all of them. In this one, the gamepad player is a ghost who can actually hunt down the other players trying to track him down. Now as a ghost, he can normally be seen except in a few instances, like of lightning strikes. However, the ghost hunters on the TV can use their flashlights to expose them, but at the expense of battery life. This one really plays out like a horror movie, and can legitimately be startling when the ghost appears and grabs you out of nowhere, particularly with a very creepy soundtrack. As I mentioned before, Luigi's Ghost Mansion and the two other competitive games are among my favorites of all the attractions, and all do a fantastic job of showcasing how a second screen can greatly enhance the multiplayer experience. Now the other three multiplayer games are team attractions, where everyone generally works together to accomplish a goal, and they're a little more uneven in quality. But all three do feature lengthy mission modes, so if you find them entertaining, they'll keep you busy for hours. My absolute favorite of the three is Metroid Blast, where the gamepad player controls Samus' spaceship and actually moves it around in 3D space to adjust their aim. Everyone else plays on the TV as soldiers who aim with the Wii Remote, and you're all working together to accomplish the same goal, whether it's defeating all the enemies or protecting civilians. This game is simply fantastic, and I kid you not when I say it's one of the most fun shooters I've played in recent memory. Everything, whether it's the controls, the excellent visuals, the teamwork dynamic, or the fantastic epic music all comes together creating the experience that I enjoy the most in Nintendo Land. Not many Nintendo games have made me feel like a badass before, but damn did I feel like one when I was grappling point to point, chucking charge bombs, and dodging fire by turning into a morph ball. Unfortunately, Zelda Battle Quest is on the weaker half of the team-based trio of attractions. In this one, your character moves automatically while you simply handle weapon control, which is the bow and arrow if you're playing on the gamepad or sort of playing on the TV. It's not that it's a bad game, it's just not as engaging as the others due to the lack of control over your character, which can lead to some frustrating moments when you get hit by attacks that there's literally no way to dodge. As for the single player side of things, the game features 6 attractions exclusive to it, in addition to the 3 team based attractions that can also be played solo. The team attractions generally hold up about as well in single player as they do in multiplayer, if maybe just slightly less enjoyable, though I still had an absolute blast with Metroid Blast regardless of how many people I played with. Unfortunately, the 6 single player only games generally left a little more to be desired. Some of them, like Yoshi's Fruit Card and Octopus Dance, simply bored me, while others, like Captain Falcon's Twister Race, are actually pretty enjoyable. The catch is that all of them are hampered by the fact that you always start from the very beginning, like an arcade game, with the goal being to see how far you can get. It can be frustrating to be forced to start over from the very beginning due to a simple mistake you made, which can also make the early parts of each challenge extremely repetitive. But other single player exclusive games, Balloon Trip Breeze almost single handedly makes up for the others with super tight gameplay and a fantastic presentation that is just a joy to behold. Even having to start over in that one wasn't enough to ruin my enjoyment of it. Overall, Nintendo Land is a hard game to review, as it's really 12 games in one, all of which will cater to different people for different reasons. For me, most of the single player games fell short due to their annoying arcade-like gameplay forcing you to restart from the very beginning. And beyond that, some, like Yoshi's Fruit Card and Octopus Dance, are just really boring. But Metroid Blast and Balloon Trip Breeze are both games I enjoyed so much and more than made up for the shortcomings of the others, which is why I'm giving the single player 4 stars out of 5. And fortunately, the multiplayer games hold up even better as a whole, with the only weak point being Zelda for me. Everything else provided my group of friends and myself with some of the most fun you've experienced in the multiplayer games and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Luigi's Ghost Mansion by itself is one of the most inventive multiplayer games I've played in years. Add to that two other great tag-like games and one superb team-based attraction and you have what might be one of my favorite multiplayer games of the year, which is why I'm giving it 4.5 stars out of 5 for multiplayer. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to learn more about the 12 Nintendo Land attractions, make sure to visit GameExplain.com and check out our discussion videos for a more in-depth take. 